Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2. Uh, last time we completed our party, in fact, um, across everything, we got a whole bunch of party members. And look, the like Gatsu is petting the dog. And everyone's in their beach outfits as well. They have their coats up, you see. The Queen's Dirge. So because those do not have additional uh, sub weapons for Mr. Hachi. Instead, they only contain... Try to hit the duck tail, buddy. Yeah, we can just go in and trade. And that's free. By the way, in case you're curious, you cannot switch while you are crouched. Yeah, I think the problem is that Robert's attack comes out so fast that, like, when he's jumping, I almost literally cannot get him to, like, the bullet goes by so quickly that I can't get him to actually hit something. Also, this is the inimitable, enviable ice level. So this is a minor spoiler, but I'm not going to do a full playthrough of this game, and there's a reason for that. Yeah. Break the ball. Um... This game has eight levels, much like you would expect for a... Perfect. Much like you would expect for a classic Castlevania-style platformer. Or really any best style platformer. Eight is a pretty good um, chunk of levels, you know? Didn't turn my swag on. Whoops. We could go up there, but we can actually go down here. As long as I do this right. <laughs> Whoops. Oh yeah, I can actually break that one. Well, that's fine. Okay. Alright, I guess I won't go that way then. The problem is that, like, when you're trying to figure out how something works, and you thought you understood how it works, and it's you know, do it first try or die on that specific thing. It's a little annoying. And now I have to do this level without my new friend. Which is also just less fun. It's why, um... Like, the game is definitely good, but there's a lot of things in it where, like, I feel like that wasn't as much of a problem in the original game. this? Okay. It is. When you actually beat this game, and by the way, that's where the door leads. Uh, when you beat this game, oh, it's a mimic spider. Oops. 
<laughs> so when you beat this game, something happens to a character. Um, and should that thing happen, uh, your char uh, your party, your remaining party will be like, well, let's go save that character. Yeah, they'll be like, let's go save that character whose name will go on me. Um, wow. But you can't beat the gun. Just as long, just as, long as I can space right. So yeah, so what happens is, like, and then you get a, a new party member, technically. Um, and the party member that you get that's new is actually Miriam from the first game. Uh, and then they're like, okay, play those same eight levels again. And, like, that's cool, I guess? But Miriam and Dominique are already very similar. Um, and Dominique and Miriam and Zangatsu already have a lot in common to begin with. Uh, um, oh yeah, I'll go this way, that's quicker. It just kind of, um... Can't really beat invulnerability, such as the nature of it, I guess. I kind of wanted. How unfortunate. Now we will stand here and trade with you. Oh, I think we can actually get this one. Lucky us. Yeah, it's these guys again. I always, I always really like these guys. I know that they have like a kind of weird design, and they actually look pretty gross. But like, they're so unique looking. But yeah, so you you play through it um, with different party members, and if I were to actually show you like, if you if you you may actually remember when I started the game, it was like, all right, what episode do you want to play? Um, and the thing is, is that, yeah, so you get a choice of, like, four episodes to pick from. But you have to beat them in order anyway. The background is so good in this, in this franchise, in this game, though. Plus, the pixel animation is just so top-notch. I mean, come on, right? It's so good. Yeah. A lot more obvious boobs this time. The last game only had, um... 
Bloodless, but this is now the second boss, and it's only the fifth boss. I'm looking at something. man. The ice is immensely for real, I would say. Well, that good. Oh yeah, and everyone is starting over with their, with their bad health as well. do get as a significant gameplay bonus in um, the original Bloodstained is that for having a um, single character instead of a bunch of you know, instead of a bunch of characters, a bunch of unique varying resources and skills, having one character who's really strong and then has a bunch of really good bonuses that's a fair trade-off, but the thing is not having to think about switching is really useful because you can just say, oh what character am I going to use? How about the only one? strong character. I mean, damn. Like, the heck with your hitless stuff. Oh, that's graphic! Jeez. And again, having this guy alive, really. I mean, it's the way that you're meant to do this. Because, like, look at my damage. The fact that I don't need to care about these spikes. And nothing else, just turning into him so he can clear the spikes for you or something. But you can totally use every character on it. Yeah, the reason that they, they do it like, like I've been describing is because in the original game, uh, what you would have was three playthroughs, right? You would have the true playthrough, which is the kind of one where you get every item. You'd have a normal playthrough, and you would have a genocide playthrough, to borrow a term, where you would kill every character. So you'd have an evil playthrough, a good playthrough, and a, neut and a neutral one. The thing is, is that the devs actually ended up really not liking the mechanic of killing your party members. Yeah. They, which is kind of weird, right? Because that's a really interesting game mechanic. And yet... You got the Soul Eraser. Soul Eraser is a cursed blade capable of obliterating the souls of good and evil alike. Only a true master can unleash its potential. Blade combo. Helm splitter. Soul domination. So you can see that we now have this little crescent slash. That's a helm splitter. Very classical helm splitter. And we also combo. So in the first game, when you kill your party members, these are actually some of the moves that you unlock. And you see that we now have that. And then this is now a lot easier to use at this stage. And it also gets everyone. And we can even have, you know, Devil Flame and Invulnerability, but that's a big sap on your resources. 